Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Imari here with 101X and 21 Pilots for today's X session here at the Frank Irwin Center. So today we're going to be doing something super special for 21 Pilots' biggest fans in Austin. You all are going to get to be the interviewer and interview the duo with whatever questions you have. So let's give a round of applause for 21 Pilots, first of all. Hello, welcome. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Austin. So I don't know if you heard that today your biggest fans are going to be your interviewers for today. So the biggest. Great. Check. Great. Check. So let's get started with our first check, listener, check. Camilla, here. There you go. Hi. Uh, my question is, what makes you feel at home when you're on tour? Tyler. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted that reaction. That's why. I just saw you for the first time today behind that curtain. <laughs> yeah. uh, candles. What else? Um, I think. Man, I don't know. Good. I think Taco Bell, no. probably. That's like a universal. We could f uh, there's been times where we've been like overseas for like a month or two at a time, and everything can feel very foreign. And then like we'll spot a Taco Bell in an airport or something, and then it's a, it is a little slice of home. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, this does not feel like home at all. Yeah. It's not my living room. <laughs> nope. Hi guys, my name's Alex. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for this intimate this thing right here we have, we have going on. My question is, I've done a bunch of research on this question. Amazon Analytics has shown a 500% increase on yellow bandanas and a 200% increase on yellow tape. So clearly the theme of the album has a powerful hold on the economy. <laughs> how, it, it does, it, it's, it's facts, it's facts. So how did yellow come as a theme and have you given any hints about the next theme color? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> now, my dad did say, like, you're going to start a tape company? Yeah. Just always should. scheming, always hustling for the next idea. Um, I don't know if those percentages are real. I feel like they're kind of conspicuously round. Exactly 500. Exactly. Yeah, I don't believe I it. Jeff. I to Jeff, and Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. He's the guy who owns Amazon? And you think... <laughs> you think the, the guy who owns Amazon knows those sorts of things. Sounds like you, you pinned him in a corner and asked him, and he was like, I got to get out of here. Let me just say the most round, ridiculous number I can think of. And he said 500%. Since when also? When did the spike occur? Yeah. Uh, right before the album released, for sure. For sure. Before the album released. Before. before. Um, yeah. Uh, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know what's next. There, but there, I guess have not, we'll... there have not been hints. No, not really. I mean, if you see Josh, like, become an entrepreneur of a, a specific type of color thing then maybe that's it. that'll be a hint so that he can get ahead of the or maybe curve. it's random mm. yeah but yeah yeah hey guys my name is miguel my Hello. question y'all what memory of the city of austin sticks out when you come by here if any i think there's a couple um we played ACL, and we did uh, South by Southwest also. And that one was one of like our first, you remember we did that like, sh it was like a showcase thing, it was on a really small stage, uh, South by Southwest. And um, that was fun. Um, My cousins live here, so I actually just had a late lunch with them a little bit ago, so they took me to a cool spot. Don't remember the name. Um, but he was asking me if we'd had, do you have any barbecue here yet? And I was like, well, I don't think I've 
I don't I don't recall, but I know that we played Stubbs at yeah. one point, which I know they do barbecue. Mm-hmm. But I don't I don't remember playing the piano and eating at the same time. So I probably didn't have any. We have. We have eaten at Stubbs. While on stage? Not while on stage. <laughs> Did we? We had it afterwards? Um, yeah. We, we actually had lunch there one time. Okay. I do remember. Um, Josh is a little better at remembering places and things, wouldn't he you say? He remembers people more than I do. I do. I do remember people. Um, no. His cousin. <laughs> his family. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. No. Uh, yeah. How, how many times have we played here? Uh, what if you knew exactly, like, nine? <laughs> yeah. It's probably been, like, five or six. I bet more. Maybe more. That um, swan dive was here. Was it? Yeah. It's renamed something else, because I, 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 I went to go find it, and it's not the same. I don't know if it's a venue anymore or not. We but played a really like small place called the Swan Dive. Is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. It's still around? Did it move? Is it still all white? Oh, really? And it's still... I thought I, thought I walked by it and it was like called something else or, or maybe it just looked very closed. Yeah. <laughs> that was my first heckler. Yeah. So the swan dive. Yeah. Well, in his defense, he, we didn't have anyone at the show. So we were just playing to no one. So then just some, some dudes walking around not like down the street kind of hear a bunch of drums I'm sure that's all they could hear probably. they kind of popped their head in and I don't know what he said but probably or something <laughs> yeah. and so I, I, I went down and, and rapped in his face uh, he didn't know that my tour manager was standing right behind him which is why I had all the confidence <laughs> to get into his face and rap and I also find it funny that even though I was rapping at him and pretending to be all I don't know, hard. If you were to hear, the, actually break down the lyrics I was saying, it's like, I'm insecure. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure life out. But, but I did it really cool. mean, right, yeah. in his, right in his face. <laughs> and he was like, whoa, bro, chill. So, there's a few, few memories for you. See? Yeah. Um, Angela, um, I have this picture. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I work at Firehouse Subs. I'm a manager there, so I was wondering what Paul's favorite sub from Firehouse was. That's a great question. Yeah. Do you say, do, do you have something you say every time they walk into the door still? Yes. We say welcome to Firehouse. No. <laughs> no. You changed it. You changed it. What? No. So you, how long have you been working at Firehouse? Uh, three and a half years. Really? <laughs> 10, 12? You don't remember that? Oh, yeah. When people come. Are coming. Yes. About to, about to come in the door, not whenever they come in. Well, they always used to say it when we walked in. Oh. They would say 10, 12, that means welcome to firehouse. That means yeah, someone, yeah, yeah. that's like code, Visitor, that's like firefighter like code for yeah. there's, there's someone in the firehouse, right? You don't know. No. We're telling you how your yeah. job works. And you're a manager? Yeah. A manager? <laughs> <laughs> like a senior position. Seems like something you learn on day one. <laughs> So I don't I know, maybe, late, maybe it's just the firehouse at, in, in Columbus. No, we're, but su- we're supposed to, but we don't do it. Y- you don't do it anymore? So it's not like a mandated yeah. rule? You don't have to yell 10, 12, welcome to firehouse? We're supposed to. Now we do it every time we walk in. Yeah, we walk in there, we're like, 10, 12! <laughs> Guys, you got a visitor in here. We're letting you know. <laughs> um, what was your question? Oh, what's the favorite sub? Yeah. Sub, yeah. Um, I get the 8-inch Italian on wheat. No onions. I just do the standard... Italian, no, no, no mods. It is one of the only places that I, I like wheat bread more than just standard regular uh, white bread. For some reason, I don't know what you do with your with your wheat, but you're doing something over there. The Channeled all that extra energy, yelling out ten, twelve into <laughs> yeah, making that yeah. wheat bread a little a little sweeter. I want that now. It sounds good. And you Get have the machine free. that has like the Im- Im- infinite amount of like. Yes. You call it Coke down here? Soda. Soda. Pop. Yeah, you're all over the place. <laughs> um, is, are those hard to fix? Like when they break down? No, they're really easy. <laughs> all I have to do is Are call you really a manager at Firehouse? 
They're really easy to fix. Yeah. No, I don't believe that for a second. I can show y'all. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for your question. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name's Sam. Uh, so as you release new music, removing certain fan favorites from your set becomes necessary. How do you choose what stays and what goes? It's a good question. Um, I have one more firehouse clarification. <laughs> Are you aware that when I ask for water, that that machine gives me like weird colored water out of your your stupid machine there at Firehouse? The reason it does it is because it uses so much flavor, so you're supposed to let it run for a second, and then the water. No, no, no. I let it run. I <laughs> sit there and I let it all drain out, and yet it's because we've I, learned. I look down in the cup and it's pink. And my mom taught me that if the water has a little bit of a hint to it, then you're allowed to go get whatever drink you want. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what she taught I me. I don't, I don't know if that's real. Um, set list. Good question. It's, it's uh, Yeah, I think we're, we're actually still pretty excited that we have too many songs because for a while we, it wasn't like there were many options Here's our set, especially when things started taking off. We were playing longer and longer sets. We, we have to play everything because we don't have that many songs. And now to be able to be in a position now where we have multiple records and enough songs to pick and choose from, we're still, we're still excited that we're there. Um, yeah, it is hard to, it's hard to make everyone happy. You know, um, we try to, we try to put ourselves in everyone else's position like what what would they want to hear um but you know at the same time we've been to shows where we walk away like oh, bummed that we didn't hear the one song that meant a lot to us or something and um it's just kind of uh it's a it's a hard balancing act juggling puzzle piece there's a lot of aspects to the set list that some people don't um uh totally un uh, realize there's logistic things between transitions and well if that mic stand is down there at the end of that song we should probably go into this song because the transition will feel nice and every song is a different color palette so there's a in a sense there are times where we intentionally want songs that have similar color palettes next to each other um, to make it feel kind of like a segment in of itself and I'm talking about the lights and the production but then there are other moments where hey if this this song has kind of an amber hue to it. We don't want to do an, another amber hue right next to it if it's a different instrument being kind of featured. We want there to be a separation. And so there's a, there's a lot of um, decision making more than just, hey, here are the songs we think that um, sound good next to each other. There's a, there's a lot of reasons why we pick what we pick and in what order. Um, it's kind of like our own, I don't know, little hobby, just trying to figure out the best set. And we still haven't landed on it and it's not perfect, so. We're trying. Thanks. Thank you. My name is Emma, and my question is, um, what's one thing that's changed your music the most since you've released your first album? The thing that's changed my music? I mean, I guess you guys. Aw. <laughs> Dude, we both got one. We both got an all. We both got an all. Your, yours was better. I don't know. There's only three. I don't think only so. Three people did that. I mean, that's true though, because before we, you know, first batch of songs, it was to no one. So, in a sense, there's nothing. You can't recreate that. Um, no matter how hard you try to recreate the idea of releasing music to no one, it's a very special moment. Um, but at the same time, there were a lot of. You know, it's fun to reminisce and you know fantasize about that time when you know we weren't at the level that we are now and kind of look at it as like glory days or um something to be i don't know jealous of um, especially as a fan that you look at where a band or an artist has come from that idea of wanting to be there from the beginning it's kind of glorified uh and the truth is it sucked being that little and not having any money and not being able to get to the next show and not knowing if what you wanted to do with your life was actually what you should be doing with your life. And so we look at a lot of, some fans will look at the, you know, the old songs or the old shows or the way that you know, things were done way in the past and kind of uh, 
I don't know, put that on a pedestal, it's hard for us to, to agree with you because it's hard. Um, we didn't know it was going to work then. We didn't see what is now. Um, so all, all that to say, I think that the biggest thing that's influenced our music kind of outside um, source of inspiration would be the fact that you know our fans are, are such a big impact on what we do and why we do it and the decisions we make inside of it. Aww. Hi, uh, my name's Dominic, and my question is, what are y'all's top three favorite desserts that Jenna makes? That Jenna makes? Aw. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I mean, you don't really... I'm the one that... <laughs> she does make cookies a lot. She does. I enjoy partaking. She's a cookie. What kind? Uh, what kind? If it were up to her, I'm sure it would be way more exotic than what I would prefer. I think she'd like want it to be like, well, she likes health stuff. Mm -hmm. So that kind of means she likes tricking me into eating things <laughs> I don't know. She's like, try this cookie. I'm like, okay, cookie. I'm familiar. It's good. It's weird. I mean, yeah, it's good. It's great. You know, your first, you want, you know, obviously she made something. You want it to be good. Um, and then she says, it's got figs in it. <laughs> well, that's, that's why I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so she's always trying to find some combination of, I don't know, replacement, like healthy. But then there are a lot, of, plenty of times where she'll, she'll just go, go yard and just make it uh, amazing uh, and unhealthy. And so, yeah, she's done donuts and pies and a bunch of stuff, so a lot oh she will I'm sorry she will she does something interesting where there's certain desserts I like with ice cream and even to the point where I'll be like I'm fine if we don't have ice cream I'm fine and I just didn't know this but she just I didn't know you could make ice cream that quickly she was like oh, I'll just make some ice cream I'm like what is, isn't that hard <laughs> and then a few minutes later we have ice cream she just made it I don't even know how it works but yeah, yeah, we're we're up pretty late. We don't really come alive until 3 p.m., so that means 3 a.m. <laughs> is prime for ice cream making. Anyway. Hi, my name is Lindsay. Uh, my question is, how do you think your relationship to your fans has changed from the start of the band to now, and how has it impacted, like, your music, performances, touring, stuff like that? What the heck was that noise? <laughs> well, you kind of just talked about that, I feel like. Like I've been talking too much. <laughs> um, I think it's. I mean, I think it's gotten. It's it's a lot cooler in some ways, and and in some ways, you know, when we were playing in tiny clubs, it was like this many people or less, and we would just pack up our own gear in the trailer, and people would help us, <laughs> and we would just chat and hang. Yeah. Um, Thanks for coming out. If you could help us. Yeah. <laughs> But people would like just be like, hey, do you want me to carry this case while yeah, we're talking great. about <laughs> something? You. And um, so we would, get, we would get done loading out a little bit quicker. Um, that didn't happen all the time. But yeah, w there was more time to just kind of like interact one on one. I think that's w the cool thing about this. In a way, it's, it's, uh, it's intimate, but still less intimate than even those days where we would just like sit around by the trailer until it was like we had to leave um so there is an aspect of that now that's kind of impossible to do um but in a lot of ways i think uh it's you know i think with technology or twitter <laughs> it still feels like i don't i mean i don't think we tweet very much but we see what people say and can keep in uh, yeah, we, th yeah. we think you guys are hilarious <laughs> <laughs> yeah and informative and informative. Um, and oh, uh, I suck today. <laughs> yeah. Copy that. Oh, cool. You zoomed really far into my face and then posted <laughs> the, the photo. <laughs> and whatever I did looks terrible. Um, so, but yeah, and then I think, I don't know. Yeah, it's, you guys definitely have an impact on us. So, I don't know. It's, it is different from when it started, but it's, this is cool. I like this. 
Hi, my name's Drew. Um, what advice do you have for someone wanting to follow in your footsteps? Um, don't get in our way. <laughs> nice. No, I just... Aww. <laughs> Aww. No, actually, I saw... Uh, I don't know, I saw an opportunity to be a jerk. I just, I just took it. That was pretty um, sweet. Did you like that? Yeah. It's I, actually a Liam Gallagher quote. Oh, really? Yeah, I ripped it right from him. He shouldn't have said that. I know, but they're, but they're gonna figure it out anyway. Um, yeah, no, someone was like, what advice do you have for bands that are like in the come up? It's like, yeah. don't get in my way. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's so cool. cool. I, um, I think that we've learned that there, there really isn't a, like a correct formula. Um, I don't think we ever tried to follow anybody's formula. Um, I think that if we could, if we went back in time, we've talked about this, it, it would be, knowing what we know now, it would be hard to do what we did again because there is a level of uh, sort of optimistic ignorance that we really had. Stupidity, really, kind of. Could call it that. Uh, but the thing that I know is that we, we believed in this, and, but we worked really hard. And, um, and I, I think that there was a lot of times where we would kind of just, what we say, we just kind of put our heads down and, and just push forward. And every once in a while we'd look up and see where we were and, okay, it's moving forward, sweet, let's keep working. And um, that's all I really know. I think that, yeah, I think we believed in it and, and we worked, but I don't know if what, what we did will work for another band as you know, what other bands have found success in, that wouldn't really work for us. So it's hard for me to say, here's what you can do to, you know, to achieve success. But I think, I think working really hard and being passionate is probably the first thing I could say. I would also add to that that you got to just get rid of your hobbies. You got to trim away everything else and just focus on it. I mean, now we have hobbies, whether it's if you consider like friends a hobby of yours or um, I don't know, video games or uh, something that I guess now in a sense we've, our families are kind of, I don't know, hobby it just seems like a negative term. But what I mean is your time is being spent on these things. And if we hadn't put our nose down to the ground and just focused on a singular thing, which was making this better, working on songs, working on the show, getting enough money for the van. To the, I mean, it was our jobs. We were working in you know, restaurants and food industry, whatever. All that money was just to put back into the idea. Um, we didn't have time um, to, to put into anything else. I think that we see a lot, of, a lot of guys and girls that want to do something like this. Um, and as much as we kind of think we just hit it really, I don't want to say lucky, but a lot of things had to line up for us to be in this position. And we're aware of that. We're honored to be there. Um, but at the same time, we see, we see a lot of people, whether it's back home um, in the local scene, that, that claim they want this as well, but then they don't live it. They have all kinds of extra curricular stuff in their life that's taking up their time. Um, you can't be about trends. You can't sway from one thing to the next. You can't change your font. You gotta, I'm, I'm serious, you gotta, you gotta stay true to what your vision is all the way down to the tiniest detail. And if you do that, then you won't have time for any hobbies. Um, and so that's when we vaguely say you have to work hard. I mean, there's a specific list of things you have to accomplish inside of the idea of like, yeah, I work hard. Because you can convince yourself you work hard as a local band, but you're not focused. Um, and so, yeah. Thanks, man. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See okay. a 500% increase on <laughs> Amazon. Uh, hi, so my name is Kaylee, and the question, oh, the question that I had was, what inspired the album cover for Trench? Yeah, I'm asking specifically because 
the vulture was kind of random. <laughs> so I was like wondering like what inspired. <laughs> you have two glasses on. I do. Does one go over the other? Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you put the sunglasses over top of the, your regular eyeglasses? Oh. But I, I usually put them on top. I like it. Yeah, that's pretty great. cool. <laughs> um, yeah, the vulture is a, it's just a, an important part of um, the narrative of the record in the, in the city of Dima. The, the vulture represents so much to the inhabitants of Dima because it's one of the only things, one of the only creatures they see that leaves and comes back. Um, and it almost becomes... Uh, a sense of inspiration to see that vulture leaving the wall of Dima and being able to fly wherever it wants, and yet it still comes back. And so, um, it, if you're from Dima, you look at that vulture as as kind of something that represents who you want to become. But at the same time, when you see a vulture up close, I don't know if you've ever seen one up close, but they're terrifying. They I mean, they're are. they're tall too. It seems like they're like my size, kind of. Yeah, they're they're not <laughs> pleasant. Um, I think that's just the idea of coming face to face with the fear of leaving where you're from and how scary that can be. Um, and so the vulture is a very important uh, piece to the narrative of the record. Um, and then also there's this, this whole other kind of deep dive into the narrative that really hasn't been uh, talked about much, but the vulture represents um, a lot of the religion that's involved in the city of Dima and um, is important to its existence. And so, in a way, it kind of has this double meaning of inspiration, but also kind of evil as well. And um, it's, yeah. I don't, I, we, I don't have time to get into it. <laughs> Next. Yeah. Hey, uh, my name's Adam. Um, what is Ned destined to do, and what will he do against Dima? Um, I will say that the Ned narrative is is a is separate from, um, I guess the the Dima narrative. So I don't think that those two um, things exist at the same time. I guess. I don't know. We'll see. Ned's a he's a he's a sly little guy. He might <laughs> wiggle his way in. Um. I don't know. I love Ned. And I you know I hate him as well. Um, I think I kind of talked about that in the lyrics of Chlorine. Um, and uh, he, he he's adorable and scares the crap out of me at the same time. And I'm kind of like you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Flattered. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I can't tell you exactly what the next step is for what Ned is going to become or, you know, what next. But um, he represents for me something... Uh, you know, when you talk to us in this setting, you know, we want to talk about, you know, food orders and, you know, what we do for fun. I think that when you listen to our music and you dive into our records, you get this really kind of heavy, dark, I don't know, feeling, which is what music was for me and it still is for both of us. This, the ability to go there. Um, and then when you maybe meet us in person, I mean, it's not what we lead with. Hey, I'm Tyler. Here's all this darkness that comes with me. You know, you kind of that's that's way back there. First, there's a whole other set of layers. Those layers aren't fake. It's really who I am. It's just you're not going to get through those. You're not going to skip all those and to get to the underneath part. I think for music, you guys have kind of been given this bridge past all that stuff to get to that deeper darker part of the things that we were working through, we're struggling with, everything that music has helped me work through. Um, and in the process, having skipped all the other kind of little lighthearted, fun, you know, normal guys that we are, skipping those layers, someone like Ned kind of falls in those front layers that we're still proud of. That that's who we are. He's a little more lighthearted. The, what he represents is a little more lighthearted, and that's why we wanted to introduce him to you guys so that you kind of got that side of us as well. Thank you all again. Uh, hi, uh, my question is, if you guys were professional wrestlers as a tag team, what song will be your entrance theme? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> and 
Gotta figure that out. Um, Photograph <laughs> by Nickelback. <laughs> Probably. Or Ball with the Ball. I would go with that one. Kid Rock. Our our buddy used to like drive us around and like tour manage us would put that on in the in the van all the time. Yeah. Um not photograph really. But the Kid Rock one. Uh I, I like either of those. I'm down for some others. Yeah. Um uh some Celine Dion. Higher by Creed. Higher by Creed. Yeah. Yeah. Instrumental. Yeah. Um, did you say, what did you say? Celine Dion? Yeah, but the instrumentals. Yeah, instrumentals. I think, she, she, honestly, she kind of ruins the songs. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, dude, that would be pretty fun someday if we Who, just who would wrestlers. start? Would you start and tag me in? or would I? I feel like I would start and then probably get hit once. And then be like, Josh. <laughs> and then I'll come in with a fold-up chair <laughs> or a ladder or something. Tra throw a trash can in there. Yeah. Good question, man. Yeah, great question. Cool. Hello. My name is Salami. Oh, sure. I'll stand <laughs> up. Um, what does the process look like to work with lighting technicians on tour to design the stage for each song? Mm. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good question. Like, it's cool. <laughs> no, it's. Uh, I mean, yeah. Like Tyler said earlier, I think even coming up with a set list, uh, and then deciding what, what that's going to look like live. I think that's just that's one of the most fun tasks. And um, so the the people that we have kind of uh, working creatively with us have been with us for a while, and. Um, it's, I think they're still trying to figure out exactly what we want it to look like, but we work really closely with them. And, uh, and, and really, every night after every show, there's 10 or 15 minutes of conversation on notes on, hey, why, why, was, why was this light like that? Or, what, you know, what, let's change this, or it could be cooler if it was this way. Um, so we have a meeting with, like, five or 10 of our, our people involved in the show and I mean yeah we're just trying we we're trying to make it better all the time um, and make it make sense make it cohesive and um, I don't know I think sometimes we've been to shows where the lighting or the sound and the performance doesn't really all line up or make sense it's like there's just some lights moving and I think that when you can have those all working together um, and all strategic and making sense, then that's just making the show more powerful and uh, just a, a cooler experience. I would say one of my favorite aspects of music is performing it live. And there's, as this gets bigger and bigger for us, there's more and more people to involve to help this big thing move. Um, and something that I feel like is very important that we did on this particular record was as the record was being written um, and as the, the, the narrative was written and the themes were in place, um, the record wasn't even finished recording yet and yet we had, um, we called it a summit, several of these summits, um, which is just a cool word for meeting. Um, but we had all of our creative guys, so we have guys that work on our LED content, which are the screens, we have our our um, LD, which is the lighting designer, we have a sh you know um, a couple of different um, programmers on the lighting side as well. Uh, we have a graphic designer and and all these different uh, kind of creative minds um, that in another band or another artist would probably work separately from each other and do what they want and then throw their ideas in and try to make it work. And it, that's what Josh was getting at, where it kind of feels a little disconnected from each other. So while we were working on the record, we had these summits at my house. We would bring everyone in and we would, and it kind of, I mean, does the lighting guy need to know what this lyric means? Probably not, but when he does, he realizes what the story is. He, he makes it his own 
and then he lives that through what it is that he does, which is creating the lights, and designing the lights, and the LED content provider, like that guy understanding um, uh, what what we're thinking about, what this the, the record means, what the themes are, what's the story. Um, and so to bring all the guys and girls that were a part of our creative team, bringing them in early and having them be a part of the conversations early on, then you saw it when the live show started to come together where everyone had really bought into the story. Um, I mean, there's still things today that I catch inside of the lighting um, that you don't realize, but I mean, there's a story being told. There's a trench, there's, there's an escape, there's a, there's a return, and there, you know, everything inside of the, the color palettes, it's all very intentional. Um, and uh, there's just something important about if you have a vision, casting that vision to everyone else around you so that they own their own area and then so, you know then they start to cast that vision out to everyone that they work with um, and so it's it's fun when everyone is on the same page hello guys my name is Amanda uh, this question here is you get sucked into the world of the last video game you played and the only way out is to win the game what game is that and would you be able to make it out it goes for both of you So we don't make, like, if we die, we're dead? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> if there was, like, a lot of pressure on a specific video game that I had to do well in, I would probably pick Donkey Kong uh, for the Super Nintendo. Donkey Kong Country. Because I played that a lot when I was little, and now I can beat it in, like, 30 minutes. So... The whole thing, I can beat it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I understand the the way that the ice works and those specific types of bees. I know their patterns, the way they're moving up and down. I think that the guys, th the guy throwing the barrel, he's that that the evil evil cousin dude. He's tougher to get around, but it, um, the hardest one of the treetops one, where the barrels are moving really fast and spinning, and you gotta connect it. But still cake for me. <laughs> Minecart? That's the best one. It's the best music, actually. Um, that one, there's one dude at the very end. Yeah. You think you're done, and then they just throw one more Kremlin in there, and you, you, you have to remember him. So, uh, yeah, I remember him. <laughs> Four-year-old? Okay, yeah. Some people don't know what that is. It's one of the best consoles ever. But Josh, you're not really a gamer. I, yeah, I've I've played like only a few games. I think one of the only games that I beat was like the original Metal Gear Solid. Um, and I feel like I, I can I can sneak around pretty well. And the the majority of that game, you're like sneaking and being quiet. Um, so that's like one of the only ones that I know. So I guess I would have to do that one. Shoot, shoot surveillance cameras and stuff. It's not as cool as my game. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Tyler. Um, so, ironically, I don't. I was planted here actually. Yeah. Really weird. Um, so I'd love to hear what the inspiration or thought process was for creating the recent album, um, and then any ideas on what's next. Uh, no. <laughs> Just because I don't like your name. <laughs> same dude, same. What's your last name? <laughs> Norton. Norton? Tyler Norton. That's cool. Can I call him Norton? That's cool. Nort. Thanks, guys. Can Norton. I call you Nort? Do you have any nicknames? Uh, Snorton. <laughs> I got that one a bunch. Copy. Or just Tyler. Copy. Just Tyler. Just All right. Tyler. Um. Yeah, guy. I. It's. It's. We're not ready to talk about where we're gonna go next with the re the next record. Um. But touring is, is, is not the best place to be writing songs, um, but creating ideas that can eventually become songs with a narrative already kind of paved out um, is kind of where we are right now. So it's going to be hard for us to dive into any details. Uh, I don't remember the last part of your question, but... What's next? I think you covered it. Yeah, so... So no. Right on. <laughs>
<laughs> so no. That's our last. That's our last question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for coming here. Thank you guys. And thank everyone here for your questions being brave. <laughs>